This is a 3D model of the prototype of Gainet's prototype. And this is in its complete assembly housed with a couple of hemispheres, some assembly pedestals holding in three gyro actuators at 90 degree associations, producing a system of equal force presence. The equal force presence of these powerful gyro actuators will prevent this model from being able to absorb any outside torque, consequently creating a unique condition in the world of physics. Motion physics currently cannot calculate the consequences of these force associations with vector analysis. So we're putting it in 3D orbit so that you can look at it from different vantage points. See that this is a three-dimensional mechanism that's modeled in this computer. What you have here is you have uh, holes in the hemispheres that show the pedestals and the rings. The gold are coils that drive the rotors inside the rings and you have uh, basically an assembly of the three rings in orbit right now. So right here we have the handles of a mechanism used to be able to grab the mechanism from its center of gravity. Go ahead and take the handles off now. Okay, now you have just the rings inside the pedestals that are holding them at 90 degree associations, allowing for any force interplay between the mechanism to affect the other uh, rotors identically with respect to one another. Go ahead and put it in 3D orbit. Let them see that for a moment. And what you've got there is you've got the basic housing for three heavy metal rotors that create massive gyro actuating forces. These are the three primary motors, three primary mechanisms of the device. They are all equal in terms of their force. The small one is a, a very heavy uh, material. The middle one is uh, medium density material and the outer one is the lightest. And uh, they are balanced so that they are all equal. See, those three rings are in 90 degree angles of association with respect to one another. The, uh, the yellow coils or the gold coils are the drive mechanism that causes the rotors inside these containment rings to move. The rotors are the actual uh, pieces that are rotating at high velocity, creating a gyro actuating effect. If you look at the small rotor, the dark ring is a heavy metal tungsten alloy or some other kind of alloy of a, of a very dense and heavy nature. The middle ring would be a stainless steel rotor or similar medium density uh, metal material. And the outer ring is a lighter density such as a titanium alloy ring in which then the physical properties of these rings have identical rotational inertias so that when they're spinning at identical velocities angular velocities, they produce identical angular momentums and consequently also create identical kinetic energies, producing a system of equal force presence. These are the bearings on each of the rotors. And when you see these bearings, there's six of them, six sets of bearings, and that allows for the rings to ride on the riding track of the housing of the half shells. Those bearings suspend the rotors so that they remain perfectly centered and balanced so they can spin at high velocity. These are ABEX-7 gyro actuating bearings with a, with a substantial thrust capacity. Between the bearings you see little magnet pockets. There's neodymium ferrous boron, very powerful magnets. Those magnets when they go through the coils can be accelerated through electrical uh, stimulation. Basically using a linear accelerating type uh, motor concept. It's a brushless motor concept driving the rotors around in circles producing the gyro actuating effect. Okay now what you've got here is you've got the three primary rotors exposed without any of the containment features being displayed so that you can see that these are the things that are spinning with respect to one another at a high velocity with a tremendous amount of force. The uh, inner ring, which would be of a tungsten alloy, in this particular rendition of the model would weigh approximately eight pounds. The uh, middle ring, uh, made out of the stainless steel alloy, is approximately four and a half pounds, while the uh, titanium ring would be approximately two pounds. Though they're different masses, 
because of their different sizes with respect to one another, they're calculated out to have identical rotational inertias, therefore being equal in their angular force components. So basically you have three things that affect one another in the same respect, in the same magnitude, in the same way, creating a motion feedback loop. And the very thing that you see this doing visually, when these rotors are in high speed motion, it will not be able to do. These rotors will prevent one another from being able to tumble, and consequently this thing will have super additive rotational inertia as a collective composite system. That shows it nicely. You can see how this is the way the rotor spins with respect, going as the magnets are going through the coils and the, uh, the bearings are carrying it on the writing track, and in turn the large ring. But in fact, in the rendition of the motor when it's actually operating, all three rings will be spinning simultaneously at the same velocity. Go ahead and let it go. Again, there we go. Now you see this, the tungsten ring in primary motion. You see now the steel ring begin to spin. And this is with respect to the coils and the half shells that are containing these. And there's the titanium ring going around in a circle. Now that shows basic functionality of the mechanism. What that is right now is that's an idealized version of three rings in association, which you have the maximum amount of mass in the smaller ring, a similar amount of maximized mass in the middle ring, and then uh, the approximate amount of mass necessary to balance out three associated heavy metal rotors. Of course, there's no bearings, there's no magnets, there's no housing to uh, associate these. So this is just an idealized version of the concept.